1071 WTJN. Good morning. I'm Clint Myers. Saturday morning programming is brought to you by Outlook Financial. And time for the mayor's report with me is Mayor Mike Beamish. He is here in the studio, <laughs> a remodel studio, I might add, Clint. Thank you again for all the hard work you're doing to promote uh, Troy Community Radio, not only in the studio, but out in the uh, community as well. And a thank you to Dave DeNoyer uh, for all his video work that he does on a regular basis, uh, highlighting some of the great things that well, the Troy community is doing. Well, you know, uh, the studio is no different than, we'll say, the downtown. Uh, if you stop, you get stuck in the mud. So it's kind of that ever evolution of, of what happens. you got to keep it moving. You know, speaking of the, the mud, uh, Glenn, <laughs> you know, you always mention, and maybe because we have had some rain, and uh, you mentioned last time, and I just want to highlight again and thank people for helping us with the storm sewers, you know. Keeping uh, those cleaned off. Yeah, you've seen our street crews out, and they're doing a lot of patching, they're doing a lot of resurfacing type of projects, but uh, the storm sewers or something that can back up pretty quick if the brush and debris kind of uh, stays on the top. So I want to thank everybody. I, I've noticed that uh, many people in the residence areas uh, have, uh, if they have a storm sewer in front of their house, have kept that clean. That not only helps the community, but helps us and the residents in that area uh, to keep things from backing up. As a homeowner, I take it as my responsibility to make sure that the stormwater drain in front of my house is clear. Every it, little bit helps. Well, that's just it. You know, I can't sit and look at it and, wrote it and think, well, someone needs to come do this when I could step out my door and, and clean it off. And, and not that the street crews don't go out and look at things, but, you the, know, they can't catch everything. That, well, that's just it. So anything that you can do to pitch in and help. And if you see something, uh, whether a pothole or a storm sewer, if you call the central maintenance facility and leave a message uh, to where the location is, they'll go out and they will check it out. But, uh, you know, civic pride is citywide, and that means we're in this together as a community. Well, like I said, you, you take pride in your home. You fix up your flower beds and make sure your yard looks nice. Why not just take that extra step? And you can uh, make sure. I even clean the gutters in front of my house along the street. So you, you, you want that best presentation? I started the street. Well, and you set the model for others to follow. So they, it's all good. It is all benefits. Well, you had council this week. We did. We had council on uh, May uh, the uh, 6th, uh, 7 o'clock, and uh, I guess the next council meeting will be May 20th. And uh, But we didn't have a whole lot. We did go into executive session, and that took a lot of time. No decisions were made in that executive se session. They came out and adjourned the meeting, but it did take a little time for that particular part of the agenda. But we had uh, three items. Uh, I'll briefly go over those. Um, first, two resolutions. One is uh, for a budgeted repair of the freight elevator. Their hydraulic system is not functioning very well. Freight elevators at water treatment plants are pretty important. Right. Now, what people need to realize that this was a 1971 vintage <laughs> elevator. So you can imagine in all that time there may be some maintenance. I'd say it's had a lot of usage. That's right. And we had originally budgeted about $70,000, well, not about $70,000 for that repair. But since that time, we've had some leakage and we're worried about that whole elevator uh, shaft. And so uh, council was asked to up the uh, budget item to $95,000. Uh, not to exceed 95 so that we make sure that water treatment plant uh, freight elevator is uh, up to snuff and meets state inspection standards. That's another key. Well, for safety issues, just alone in that, 
you you want to have that. Well, that was number one resolution, and that passed unanimously. We had all nine people of council there. The second resolution dealt with cooperative purchasing agreement that we have and had uh, with Miami Valley Communications Council. This is an opportunity to get the best bang for our buck. It's where you have a lot of municipalities working together in partnership to get the best deals. That's a good thing. And so uh, to do that, we had to do that in emergency legislation so we can all be a part of that partnership. And that, again, passed 9-0. And, and that'll deal with some materials, some different kinds of projects that we all share. So, uh, and uh, that'll move forward now. There was one ordinance, and that was a rezoning. And we've talked about it uh, for the last couple of meetings, and that is going from uh, a county zoning to a city zoning of R4 single family residential district. The best way to say it, it's across from uh, the country club where the uh, Robinson estate uh, has been purchased by Denlinger okay. and uh, Bart. Uh, and uh, they were looking at putting in uh, 22 lots in that area and developing that. Uh, and it has to be rezoned. Um, Bill Twist is the chair of uh, uh, the Economic Development Committee, and he asked that to go to a fourth reading. It's in that uh, reading, which we can do. Uh, they can move it on as many readings, uh, and he, I believe he is scheduling a uh, kind of a public interest meeting to listen to people, which I think is a great thing. And uh, that will take place, I think, sometime prior to the May 20th council meeting. Um, at which time uh, Mr. Twist may ask to go to a fifth rating. So uh, depending on the feedback that he, he will receive and the committee receives. So actually that public hearing took place uh, April 15th, but they want to gather more information. There was some, um, uh, I guess, clarification needed. Uh, everything was talking about an R4, but I think in some place in the wording uh, and an R5 uh, or uh, some other zoning was mentioned. It is clearly an R4 rezoning application, so uh, that's why we're taking due diligence and, and making sure that that was uh, uh, that all the the uh, input is is gathered. Okay. So. Thanks to Bill Twist and the subcommittee and the full council for moving that to another reading. We did have one other uh, committee report from the personnel committee. Mr. Sievert uh, presented that, and that was at my recommendation uh, to appoint uh, Ann Baird to the Miami County Health Commission Board. And um, uh, this is due to the fact that Ruth Ann Cron, uh, who has been on that board, uh, is has resigned effective now and uh, so the unexpired term will go through March 31st of 2020 and Ann Baird will assume that role and um, uh, normally it's a five-year term but this is an unexpired term that goes to 2020 so uh, they passed that unanimously 9-0 as well so congratulations to Ann Baird there you go um, and that pretty much, does that wrap up everything from council? Pretty much we took covered council. I mentioned executive <laughs> it session was, probably took longer than the actual council public meeting uh, took place, but uh, there was no action taken. They just adjourned at the end of the executive session. Well, like you said, it was just kind of a short one. Yes. All right. Um, we're a bike-friendly town. We sure we are. know that, and uh, that's why we took part of the cycling summit. We do, and that uh, took place on May 10th uh, in Miamisburg. But we are a bronze medal bike-friendly community, and not many in the state of Ohio have achieved a bronze medal. In fact, I don't believe anybody's been a silver medal. So we're right there uh, showing that uh, we believe uh, in all kinds of transportation. Uh, and bikes are uh, certainly a, f a form of that transportation. We have great recreational trails. 
uh, in this whole region. So uh, we participated in the uh, Bike Summit, as we did with the River Summit not many weeks ago. I was just going to point that out. You know, we took part in the River Summit. As a matter of fact, not only did we take part in it, it was at Hobart Arena. Absolutely, and it was wonderful. And, you know, uh, different forms of transportation. The river is an asset. It's a treasure. Uh, the cycling summit is a treasure because of our recreational trail system and the opportunities that we have for people uh, on bicycles. So uh, we participated in that, as we should, being a bike-friendly community. And uh, wanted to add in... Uh, we've got a business here in town that is celebrating yes. 40 years in Troy. Dan Kerber, uh, everybody knows the name Dan Kerber. Uh, he was the founder of the uh, Kerber sheet metal fabrication uh, business. Um, just recently, uh, in fact, May 10th, they celebrated their 40th anniversary as a KSM fabrication, metal fabrication company. Founded by Dan Kerber, the current CEO is Kathy Kerber, but um, they've done some really remarkable things. And what I think adds to that is their involvement and their love for this Troy community goes deep. They participate, they sponsor, uh, they've been involved, and so we celebrate, uh, and I did a proclamation uh, naming uh, May 10th as uh, KSM Metal Fabrications 40th anniversary day in Troy, Ohio. Um, recently, early on, uh, they received a recognition from the Troy Area Chamber of Commerce as one of the uh, Small Business uh, of Excellence Awards. So uh, a lot of people recognize Kerber Sheet Metal uh, as a vital to our small business community, and we talk about that all. We talk about the downtown, but many times we uh, we should and need to talk about those small businesses that make the fabric. I was gonna. That's what Troy is made up of. We have so many smaller businesses, and when you think of the downtown, there they are family businesses and their backbone. Yes, the backbone, and that's why I wanted to mention that they contribute to sponsors and being involved in the community. Uh, in in so many different ways. So we thank them and certainly hope the next 40 years is just as productive. Absolutely. Um, just looking out the window, you can see how close we are getting to summer. I'm getting excited. Uh, the trees are completely leaved out now. Yep. Uh, we'll see them get a little fuller, but something else we're going to see coming downtown soon will be all the flowers and the plants. And that also kicks off the Prouty Plaza season which uh, always starts with the school bands. Clint, you are just wonderful <laughs> at good promos. I, I like that. I don't even have to mention, and you've highlighted what I was going to say to close, is we have a beautiful downtown. It continues to be beautiful. Um, and you're right. We may not have something this weekend or during the week, but the following week... Uh, boy, it just kicks off the activity season on Prowley Plaza, and that just goes down to Hainer Cultural Center as a treasure, and then we can just go to the amphitheater, and we know that uh, the uh, Troy Community Band has a home there, and they've got programs being planned. Uh, so, boy, in the next couple of weeks, we're off and running, and I think people in this, not only our Troy community, but the Miami County and the region in Joy's coming to downtown and to our other venues of Troy and see things just pop up and grow and events and activities blossom. So the 20th, the 21st, and 22nd, bring your lunch downtown That's right, lunch. and enjoy it on Browdy Plaza with the school bands. And I'm glad you mentioned lunch because that's not evening programs. Those are noontime programs and you can just picnic and listen to the beautiful music. Absolutely. And I wanted to point one more thing out. We know uh, this is your uh, final year as mayor, yes. and you have your uh, uh, kind of a farewell trip planned to Takahashi, Japan. Uh, 
Thanks for, boy, <laughs> man, you are on fire to, today in our show. Um, yes, we will be leaving. A, a small delegation will be going over to Japan. As many people know, we have a lot of uh, Japanese businesses that have parent companies uh, in, uh, in Japan. So this being my 16th year and my final year as mayor, uh, I want to go over uh, and say thank you on behalf of all the citizens of Troy for their support and involvement and expansion in Troy, Ohio. So number one is to say thank you to those many businesses that we uh, have here that have parent companies in, in Japan, like F-Tech, like Honda, and like F&P and, and Cigna. And you think of how many people are employed right here by those companies. Absolutely. And so we say thank you. And then we will also go to our sister city that we've had, uh, gosh, since, uh, no, gosh, 1980, I believe, is when we started that sister city relationship. And Mayor Kondo from Takahashi and myself renewed that friendship and that sister city relationship. Um, and so it's my uh, farewell opportunity to go and there again to continue that relationship for future years, having students, having government uh, exchanges uh, so that we can uh, learn a little more about our, each other's culture and uh, show our support for each other. Well, we certainly have built quite the relationship with our sister city. I'm looking forward, uh, you know, Takahashi City, uh, our sister city, had a devastating flood uh, not uh, less than a year or so ago. So going over there and showing that we do care about them and also uh, seeing how they revived. And I know they have done a lot of uh, uh, positive things to kind of you know, restore things to uh, some sense of sanity. <laughs> well, let's hope so. That's right. You'll be able to report on that firsthand when you come we'll back. We'll come back and we'll talk about those experiences. All right. Mayor, thank you so much. Thank you, Clint. You did great today. I mean, <laughs> you had all the promos. Uh, I just had to just answer. I got to gotta stay on top of it when I've got you on the air. Uh, right? You and Dave, and, and I just think the, the Troy Community Radio has provided so much positive benefits. You, you really do look for the good. And we do have a lot to look for. And well, I don't think we have to look that hard. Thank you so much. <laughs> this has been the Mayor's Report with Mayor Mike Beamish. I'm Clint Myers on 1071 WTJN.